Jesus won, Satan lost, and God's kingdom is changing the world through you and me, Christ's ambassadors. But what is God's kingdom all about? What are our given objectives in this raging battle for souls? Prepare to be strengthened and challenged as we uncover the biblical truth in today's episode of Invasion of Light podcast. Welcome to Invasion of Light podcast, where we study God's Word to equip and ignite you to invade your world with the light of Jesus Christ. My name is J.J. Weller. I'm on staff with Message Ministries and Missions and the co-author of Invasion of Light. And my name is Brian Weller. I'm uh, the founder of Message Ministries and Missions and just blessed to be with you today and so glad you tuned in to watch. And we're excited about talking about the battle objectives of God's kingdom. Because we're all in a battle. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, Brian, I'm kind of tired of fighting. And I just have to say, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I feel the same way sometimes, too. But the enemy never retreats. He gets sent away in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. But he doesn't just volunteer and say, hey, I'll put my fiery darts away and leave you alone for a while. He's just going to keep assaulting. But the good news is that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Jesus promised us victory if... We go out in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we walk in the promises that yeah. he's given us. Well, you know, it's as the word says, um, that where there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. And if we don't have in our minds and in our hearts the clear objectives that Jesus has given us in our mission, then we're going to fail. Because yeah. if you shoot at nothing, you're sure as heck to get it. Right. Well, <laughs> plus, if you don't have a vision, because vision and purpose are like partners. Yeah. Because when you get a vision... You have a purpose. Yeah. And then, and then with the purpose brings you to prayer because you know the vision that God's going to give you is bigger than what you or I could accomplish on our own. Yeah. God's never just going to give us something that's like, uh, we could go, okay, hey, I can do that. No, that's why Paul was saying, Hey, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because God called him to do things that basically were humanly impossible. But like the verse I read the other day with, with, uh, God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. Well, you know, if we don't know our objectives, then we're going to aim for the wrong thing. True. You know, yeah. if I'm hired to edit books and I come back to you as my boss with a beautiful painting, you're going to say, well, you know, that's a nice painting, but I hired you to edit books. Exactly. You know, <laughs> and so th the church needs to know what our objectives are in battle, because there's so many things that we could get tripped up on that we could aim for right. that Jesus never called us to aim for. Exactly. You know, he, he never called us, you know, for instance, to, to have the biggest cathedral or, or to have the fanciest show or any of these things, right. you know, but to make disciples and to glorify God. Right. Well, and he called us to bear fruit. Yeah. And I mean, the only fruit that's going to last and remain is going to be things that God wants to do, because anything else is a dead work. And in Hebrews 6, uh, in the basic principles of the doctrine of Christ, one of the things we're supposed to repent of is dead works. Yeah. And uh, so like you say, we, we've got to have vision. And the vision we need to have is God's vision. Yeah. It's not that hard. It's not like we have to sit there and come up with something, you know, amazing. God's already mapped it out for us in his word. And then he gives us the, the finer details of how we're going to live that out. Amen. And uh, what our objectives are. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us. We want to encourage you to subscribe, like this video, uh, leave a comment, let us know your thoughts throughout the video, uh, click that notification bell, and check out our book, right. Invasion of Light, that this podcast is based off of at Invasion of Light, www.invasionoflight.com. TV. Invasion of Light podcast is a ministry of Message Ministries and Missions. We're an evangelical missions organization dedicated to reaching the unreached and teaching the reached to do likewise. Yeah. So let's get into our teaching discussion for today and look at our roadmap in the Bible. Mm -hmm. What are the objectives for this battle that the Lord has given us? Um, but first, before we can talk about the battle objectives of, of God's kingdom, we got to talk about a little bit what is God's kingdom? Could you give us a little bit of an outline of that? Yeah, and I mean, to me, it's like I, I I always say Jesus gave us a command that we all need to know and understand. And that command was in Matthew 6, 33, where yeah. he said, seek first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And of course, sometimes people misappropriate that promise by saying, I'm going to seek first and I'm going to believe God for the, the, you know, the fancy Mercedes or the case may be. But basically we have to keep that in terms of what was Jesus actually saying and what did he mean by right. that? But what is the kingdom of God? I like to put it this way. I wrote it out to make it clear. The kingdom of God is the rule, reign, and royalty of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Spirit on, on the earth and throughout all of God's creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and we know that the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It has nothing to do with materialism. Yes. The kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. And I love what I think it was uh, Ern Baxter many years ago. He capsulizes that the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit. Right. And so we have to be led by the Holy Spirit to understand what it is. Yeah. And then we can begin to walk in it and walk in the power of it and walk in the fulfillment of the commands that Jesus gave right. along with it. So, right. And it's so wonderful because, I mean, in the Old Testament, uh, the, the greatest hope of every Jew's heart was that one day God would come and he would be king. Right. You know, the Jews had had experienced such destruction and sin had ravaged them so many times, but there was a, a promise that God had given them that one day uh, he would defeat their enemies. He would forgive their sins and he would begin to restore the world yeah. uh, reigning through them. And right. that is the kingdom that's beginning to break in through every person who trusts in Jesus. Jesus, he rose to yeah. the throne. It says, all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Yep. He has won the victory. Yeah. And now through you and me, he is advancing in society. He's advancing one person at a time, changing lives, taking yeah. people who are trapped in darkness, taking people who are lost in the doldrums of sin and drawing them to repentance, convicting them of, convicting them of sin, yeah. revealing the reality of what he did on the cross for our salvation, drawing them to repentance, changing their lives. And as individual lives change, the kingdom of God advances through society. And this is a beautiful promise oh, well, of God's yeah. kingdom. Well, you know, I, th I think of when, when Jesus, he basically was telling uh, the disciples and telling people, he said, my kingdom is not of this, this earth. Yes. And, uh, and that kind of rattled, you know, even though they were beginning to follow him a little bit, but he wanted to make it clear. His kingdom was not an earthly kingdom. Right. Not at this time. That yeah. will come later yes. where he'll rule and reign. But the beauty of it is, then he said to the disciples, it's better for you that I go. Yeah. Because if I go, then I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. And then you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you'll be my witnesses. Mm -hmm. And I know we've talked a lot about that verse, but I think it, it's so important to, to remember yeah. that uh, apart from walking in the Spirit and being careful about quenching the Spirit, which were warned by Paul the Apostle, yeah. that... Um, that we're really not going to be able to walk fully in the full potential of the kingdom of God. Because yeah. like you said, Jesus, he's, he's at the right hand of the father. He's ruling and reigning. And I like what Ern Baxter said many years ago. He said, you know, the father thinks it, the son articulates it and the Holy spirit brings it to pass. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, so, and, and he brings it to pass most of the time through us. Exactly. And that's when you said that, it just stirred <laughs> in my heart. Um, because he said, it's better that I go. And yet I think that most of us as Christians do not live as if Jesus said that. Right. The lives that we live do not attest what Jesus said. And that's not Jesus' fault. That's our fault. Right. Because Jesus gave the promise. Right. He said that it would be better off if he went. More wonderful things would happen. Right. Greater move of, moves of salvation would come to pass because God lives inside of us. The Holy right. Spirit lives inside of us. The God who parted the waters of the Red Sea, the God who rose Jesus from the dead, the same Spirit who lived, who rose Jesus from yeah. the dead, dwells inside of us, uh, Paul says. And so, wow, I mean, there is just an ocean of depth that we should be pursuing in the Lord. There's so much that God yeah. wants to do, and we need to be stretched and to see that God wants to do really by even by our measures, almost infinitely more than we can imagine. Like he's, he said exactly through Paul, God can do exceedingly and abundantly more right. than we could ever ask exactly. or think according to the spirit that is at work within us. Now that qualifies when you're talking about personal holiness. That talks about when we're pursuing God in intimacy. That talks about the great commission in the harvest that God wants us to reap. He can do greater yeah. exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could ask or think. 
my gosh, I got to ask or think a lot of things. And that, that just shows you that we are not grabbing onto the promises of God. The promises of God are yay and amen. And right. we need to go face down on the floor and cry out to God and say, Lord, you promised. And I know you want me to ask for yeah. those promises. I know that you want me to cry out for those promises to become a reality. Do greater and exceedingly and abundantly yeah. above everything that I could ask or think in me, in our relationship. And as I seek to get a harvest by preaching right. the gospel in the whole world. Well, can you imagine uh, the thoughts that went through the apostles' minds when Jesus looked at them and he said, <clears throat> the things that I do shall you do also, and greater things than these shall you do, because I go to my fathers in heaven. Of course, he's talking, then he can disperse, dispense, send, pempo, the word in the Greek, yeah. the Holy Spirit. But then it's like I'm reading through the book of Acts right now. At one point, you read about Paul, and it basically, <laughs> there's in the Testament, it basically says that they would send handkerchiefs out to other people, and when it touched their bodies, they were getting healed. Yeah. Jesus didn't do that, and that's not to belittle Jesus. That's to say he was fulfilling the, the very words that he proclaimed, yeah. and because it was done for the glory of God. Yeah. And where it, where it short circuits is when we start trying to take credit for it. Yes. Because none of us can do any of those things apart from the Holy Spirit doing what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Yeah. And us being strategically at that place, fulfilling that divine appointment. Amen. Well, and that leads right into our first battle objective. The first objective that God gives us as we're participating in this battle for souls, it is to bring glory to God. Yeah. We need to get this at the first, the forefront of our minds and our hearts, that our first objective in our mission is to bring glory to God. Yeah. God promised in Ezekiel 36, 22 to 23, why he would establish his kingdom. And this passage is very controversial, and I think we all really need to dwell on it for ourselves and for our mission. This is what he says. This is what the sovereign Lord says. It is not for your sake, people of Israel that I'm going to do these things, that I'm going to establish my kingdom, that I'm going to move in the earth, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you've profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the sovereign Lord, when I am proved holy through you before their eyes. So what he is saying is he's speaking to the people of Israel and saying, you have profaned my <clears throat> name through your sins. And I'm going to save you, mm -hmm. but I'm not just going to do it for you. I'll do it for you because I love you. But the main reason I'm going to do it is to restore my name in the nations, which you profaned everywhere that you've gone. Mm -hmm. The nations had lost respect for Yahweh. The nations had many had begun to think that God was maybe a weak God, or maybe he didn't care for his people. But God promised to restore right. his name. And that's what his kingdom is doing now, person by person, uh, soul by soul. But you know what? It brings me to think that story of Israel sounds very familiar <laughs> to where we are today. Because unfortunately, the church, many of us in the church have profaned his name where we've gone. And we've given Jesus a bad name. Right. We've given Jesus a, ba a bad name by the way that we live, uh, by people uh, <clears throat> continuing in sin, having a low standard of righteousness. Or on the other hand, uh, people who have had a high standard of righteousness, but who have used it as a weapon uh, to to just to criticize and not to lovingly convict, but to bash other people. Right. You know, and God's promise is that as we go forward with this great commission, his objective is to restore his name. Right. People who thought that God was a nasty God, people who thought that Jesus was a powerless God, that they'll see that he's the great and glorious God, that he's the wonderful king who is righteous and holy and will have no compromise with right. sin, but who will give everything <clears throat> to save a lost sinner and to draw them into his goodness and his kindness. Oh, without a doubt. And I think another thing as you were speaking, I was thinking of is that sometimes we give Jesus, we give God credit for things he does not want credit for. <laughs> <laughs> we basically, you know, it's like there was an old show back in the 60s by Flip Wilson, and he would say, well, the devil made me do it. And we, sometimes we attribute to God things that he does not want any credit for. Yeah. And we see that a lot in modern Christianity. Yeah, and, and I'm just going to bring it up for a second where we have churches 
and preachers that are basically saying <clears throat> abortion is okay. Yeah. Homosexuality is okay. Totally. Um, adultery is okay. Mm. Polyamory. Drunkenness is okay. And what they're doing is they don't want to offend people, so they're affirming things and are saying, well, it's because of God's love. And they forget God does not want, he does not agree with that. He is never going to agree with that. He came to deliver us from those things. Yeah. And so I think we, we have to... We have to be very careful. Yes. Because uh, we could border on blasphemy yeah. by doing those things. It's absolutely blasphemous because the first <clears throat> mission of this kingdom is to win worshipers for Jesus. But that means true worshipers. Yeah. Because what did Jesus say? He said that um, <clears throat> those who worship him will worship in spirit and in truth. Exactly. Worship not only with their words, not worship only with, with song, but from their heart in a life of obedience fueled by the grace of God. And that is needs to be our objective, to lead people into true worship, yeah. to lead people into a life that obeys God, glorifies God through obedience. Um, like in Matthew 5, 16, <clears throat> he tells us this, that as we live a holy life, he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Right. Yeah. He doesn't say, as you live like the world, that they'll see your bad works and glorify your Father in heaven. He doesn't say that as you compromise and, and you, you know, lower the standard and you accept everything that they accept. Right. <laughs> that they'll see your bad works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the method of a lot of people today. Right. Unfortunately, yeah. a large group <clears throat> in the church has apostatized and have pursued a false gospel that lowers the standard yeah. of righteousness. And if we want for people to really glorify our Father in heaven, we can't pursue bad works. It says, let your light so shine before right. men that they may see your good works, and then they'll glorify their Father in heaven. That we could introduce the world to the holy God. They could see yeah. his wonderful goodness. You know, I think of it just like this, that uh, a lot of times people might think that it's selfish that God would would do things for his own glory. But his glory is for our good. Right. I want to read something from Invasion of Light um, where we explain this a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is from page 39. This may seem selfish to the undiscerning eye. Why should I follow a God who does everything for himself? But that's a misunderstanding of this biblical teaching. We must realize God doesn't seek his glory at the expense of his people. Actually, nothing benefits us more than God's glory. You see, God is most glorified when we see and experience his goodness. When God is glorified, the sick are healed, sinners are mm -hmm. saved, cultures are transformed, relationships are reconciled, God's church grows, and heaven fills to capacity. The new covenant revival advances. But when God isn't glorified on earth, sickness rules our bodies, sinners rebel without constraint, cultures deteriorate, re relationships crumble, the church retreats and hell mm -hmm. overflows. Put simply, God's glory means the world's redemption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God's absence means the world's destruction. We desperately yeah. need God to glorify himself. So it's not that God would be glorified at our expense. His glory is our greatest gain. Yeah. When God is glorified, as John Piper says, God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in him. When we experience yep. his beauty, it's just like when you uh, go to the mountains of North Carolina and you look there, uh, maybe at the dusk, and you see the colors changing over the mountains. You just sit there and say, wow, this is so beautiful. God's glory, his beauty is infinitely greater than that mountainside sunset. It's the most wonderful and beautiful thing that you could ever see. And the second that we see his beauty, we say to ourselves, we can't help but say to ourselves, this is why I'm alive, yeah. to know God as he is, and that there's no one else who we would want to be glorified, because right. we see in those moments, he's the only one who deserves to be honored and glorified. Yeah. Well, plus, you think about it, one way God displays his glory is, is by redeeming us as people, exactly. and not just saving us for heaven one day, Yeah. but here we are, we're restless, we have no hope, that yeah. was me before I was saved. I remember my parents sat me down after I got saved, and like, Brian, what happened to you? 
<laughs> because I was a guy that, you know, I'd come in stoned and I'd hide my eyes so they wouldn't see. And they, what happened to you? God's peace was in my heart. See, that that brings glory to God. Jesus said, if 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 I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself, all people. And when when someone's hopeless and all of a sudden they have hope and they're speaking about hope, um, that glorifies God. Yeah. But we get the benefit of it because we got the hope yes. that we didn't have before. Yeah. Or we have the joy that we didn't have before. And Jesus talked about all those things. Peace that passes understanding, joy that is full. He's the God of all hope. Amen. So we, we, we have to see it from that perspective. Yes. Otherwise, we're, we're totally misunderstanding, um, the, the, the doctrine or the teaching of, of God glorifying yeah. himself. Well, it's a self multiplying glory, if I can put it that way. Because this is the story. He's the king. He's the glorious king. And as he shows his glory to me, that changes my life. And now I want to show that glory to someone else, but that's not going to get them all sad and depressed. And well, first, when they get convicted, they'll probably be a little sad and depressed. But then they meet the king. Oh, without a doubt. Man. And their lives are changed. And that multiplies. And that multiplies. It's the next person, the next person. Once again, his glory is our greatest gain. When we see his beauty. Yeah. We come alive. Well, it's kind of like, you know, when when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, whether we're saved or unsaved, it's almost like somebody finding out they have a really bad uh, cancer. Yeah. But then a the doctor says, but we can we can get rid of the cancer. Yeah. You see, there's and, and then it's out. And then you're just so thankful you got rid of it. And I think that's how it is when we receive the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I would say, God. What is it? Um, the goodness of God leads us to repentance. And we see the glory of God, the goodness of God, and it leads us to that place uh, of repentance. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Amen. Well, and the second objective is to bring God's kingdom to the whole earth. Dad, can you read Matthew 6.10 for us? Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And We've talked about this before in an earlier podcast, but I want to, so I'll go through it briefly. But we have to see that this is in the Lord's prayer. And when Jesus prayed this prayer, something powerful happened, not, not just on the earth, but in the atmosphere. Your kingdom, which we know is the rule, the reign, and the royalty of Jesus Christ. Jesus prayed, let that kingdom, let it come. That word, ekomai, could be translated, let, let it arise. Let it, let it come into being. Let it come from one place to another. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Jesus knew what he was saying. He says, your kingdom come from one place to another. Let it be established. Let it find its place of influence. And then he says, let your will, your pleasure, your desire, O oh God, let it be done. Let it, let it arise. Let it be assembled. Let it be finished. Let it be brought to pass. Let it be performed. Let it be fulfilled or let it happen. And, and that basically shows us, um, the prayer of Jesus. And that's in the Lord's prayer when Jesus taught us how to pray. And this is something that we should be praying as well. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that his kingdom would, would come in our lives every single day. And that's the rule, the reign, and the royalty of Jesus Christ. Because apart from that, we're going to get sidetracked. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to try to fulfill our own desires. We're going to try to fulfill uh, our own plans, our own vision. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a verse that I love in Habakkuk 2 2. It says, write the vision and make it plain so that he that reads it may run with it. And I like to personalize that because if the Lord puts something on my heart, I like to, I like to write it out. Sometimes we type it out nowadays. And it's not just so others could read it, but so I can read it again, because yeah. this is the Lord giving, he's kind of showing me what my divine appointment is to be in that season of my life. Yeah. It could be, it could be, uh, something that's for your whole life, like what the Lord spoke to me when I was, uh, or showed me when I was 19, or it could be something more specific. Yeah. But it's, it's to bring that kingdom message to the whole wide world. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's a really sober <clears throat> call because Satan's kingdom of darkness has asserted power over the hearts of men all over the world. It says in 1 John 5, 19, we know that we're of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So the whole world yeah. is in the darkness of Satan. That's how, that's yeah. how people come. And now it's our mandate, it's our objective to retrieve the nations from the jaws right. of hell. 
and to spread the glorious redemption of Jesus wherever we go. Acts 26, 17 to 18, this is the mandate that God gave you and me. We've said it many times, but this is crucial to the message of invasion of life. It says, I am sending you to them, the, na- the Gentiles, which means the nation, yeah. to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. So the nations are under the power of darkness and we are called to open their eyes and yeah. turn them from darkness to light. We need to go to every single nation, every single people group, every single ethnos yeah. and proclaim this message of light wherever the darkness is, which is everywhere. That's why Jesus said, preach the gospel to every creature, yeah. make disciples of every nations. Yeah. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Wherever darkness is, we must invade with the light. Without doubt. And you know, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of uh, that there's no retirement in God's kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> retirement comes later uh, when either the Lord takes us home or he comes back to take us all home. There's no retirement in God's, God's kingdom. And I, I know some awesome missionaries that, they did some of their best work when they actually hit retirement age. Yeah. <laughs> and because they decided they weren't going to just stop. They had to keep doing something. And, and one verse that comes to mind, and this is, this is for you as it is for me today. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And, and he wants us to proclaim the glorious message into the darkness. And, you know, sometimes we we get discouraged. People get discouraged because they think, well, you know, I did that and really I didn't really get the results I was hoping for. <laughs> but we have to realize that God takes that word and he keeps working with it. He may bring that back to somebody's remembrance one year later, two years later, three years later. He may bring somebody else that's in his kingdom that, like like Paul said, one, one sows, one waters. One reason, but God gives the increase. So, so we, we, we can't get discouraged. We have to keep, uh, proclaiming his word. And, and the main thing nowadays, one of the main things for Christians is many Christians have gotten silenced because of, because of carnal Christians. Yeah. Okay. Christians that say, no, you can't preach that because people won't feel like they're loved by God. Hmm. And, and I had a discussion with someone one day and I won't get into the whole thing, but I, I, I said to them, I, because they were affirming someone in uh, a sin that the word speaks very strictly against. And I said, you have to tell them the truth. You're not doing them any favors because just like me, they're going to stand before the Lord and they're going to have to give an account for their life. And they're not going to be able to say, you know, Joey's a Christian and he told me that that's okay. We, we have to preach the word. And I think we have to be very careful nowadays. Not that we, we condemn people. No. And I always use the illustration of Jesus uh, with Mary Magdalene. He didn't condemn her like the Jews were. Um, he said, but Mary, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. And I, I think we, we have to keep that in mind. We have to speak the truth and, and we have to offer the opportunity of salvation to people, but we can't compromise the message to get the response. Well, and we need to expect, which is something that I'm facing in this period of time, that like, we have to expect that when you invade into the darkness, that the darkness is going to push back. Oh, without a doubt. You know, I mean, yeah. last time that we, you know, after <clears throat> after one of the shows we recorded recently, you know, we went to Sunny's and we talked, we shared with that one guy right. um, with, the, with, with the waiter. But uh, what I didn't see there, which Cynthia was watching, is the people across from us um, <laughs> Oh my gosh, they were getting so mad, you know, as because we were just, you know, telling uh, a basic truth. I was going through the law a little bit. And um, the waiter was listening. Oh, he was listening he was very listening. closely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I believe the Lord was touching his heart, yeah. you know, but um, I, I mentioned lust and I, you know, I talked a little bit about the sin of lust. And Cynthia says that the people across from us, she said the word she used, he looked like he wanted to kill you. <laughs> and he whispered something to the waitress about the blah, 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 preacher, preacher, you know, and he was trying to get, you know, us to stop. And that's the thing is when you go into the world 
in a world that is <clears throat> that is Satan once again has usurped power over the hearts of men. It says that the whole world lies in the sway of the evil one. Friends, we're going to have to fight. Yeah. We're going to have to fight. This isn't just going to to fall into our hands. This is a battle yeah. for souls. It's not a casual stroll. And this is something that we've forgotten. And I think that we desperately, especially in America, need to yeah. uh, drudge it into ourselves that this is a battle yeah. for souls. You know, even Paul said, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. And I find that a lot of times when I want to share the gospel in this recent season, I haven't really sought to persuade. I've just sought to share. And it's good to share, but we have to find ways to persuade, right. to take people's ideas and to lovingly challenge them and say, hmm, well, look at this. And well, look at this reality. How about this? It's a battle. And we have to expect that there is going to be pushback. Right. Well, and we read the weapons of our warfare. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And some of those strongholds, they're, they're not just demonic strongholds. There's their their wrong thoughts, yeah. you know, that that people have embraced because they've heard it from so many places. And I'll say it again: a lot of that, a lot of the unfortunate things that are happening now are coming from Christians that are embracing. Uh, they're not embracing absolute truth anymore. Yeah, and uh, it's it, it, it's a sad thing. And uh, yeah, so. But the glorious thing is that this objective will be fulfilled in Revelation seven nine and twelve once again says, after these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the land, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, mm -hmm. saying, salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. The mm -hmm. nations will glorify God. Yeah. They will be one. So, thank God for that. Yeah, Dad, could you lead us in a prayer to wrap this show up? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, you, you've given us absolute truth. And God, we confess sometimes we misinterpret it, but we know that as we yield to you, that you will, you will make real what we need to know and understand. And you, your word says that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. So Father God, and your word also says through the, <laughs> that he who knows the truth will be set free. So God, we pray that as we end this, this podcast, that you would make your truth real to us, Lord. And Father, we also pray that as we embrace that truth and as we go out with it, that you will give us the wisdom to know what truth to speak and who to speak it to. We pray, Lord, that you would give us the courage, Father, not, not to cower in fear, but to be able to stand strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, Lord so that we might represent you and that we can snatch people from the fire as, as Jude wrote in his little book, Lord. Father, use us to snatch people from the fire and to bring them into, into, into the kingdom of God, into a relationship with you, Jesus Christ. We pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we're going to continue this discussion of the objectives, the battle objectives, of God's kingdom. We have three more points to go through. We want to encourage you to check out this book, Invasion of Light, How Jesus Can Use You and Me to Win the Battle for Souls and Societies. If you enjoyed this show, you're really going to enjoy the book. The Holy Spirit, I believe, will use it to inspire you, to stir you, to instruct you, to encourage you. It's full of scripture, and I really believe it's a kickstart guide for uh, the Great Commission. Amen. We want to encourage you to like this video, leave a comment, leave your thoughts for us, Click that notifications bell if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or elsewhere. Subscribe, leave a review, help us to get this biblical content to the whole world so that we can advance together this invasion of light. Well, thanks so much for joining us. And until next week, let's go and invade the world with the light of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen.